I've made a lot of progress lately on the CNC build, so it's time for a few updates. And probably the coolest thing I've added is the ability to jog the machine using an Xbox controller. <laughs> so this is plugged in uh, via USB to the computer down there running Linux CNC, and with the program uh, QJoyPad, I'm able to turn this thing into a keyboard emulator and send the shortcuts for jogging over to the Axis GUI on Linux CNC to control the machine. In addition to that, I've used the uh, HAL configuration files to set two of these buttons up as overrides for the Z-axis. So I guess X is up and A is down. And I can use that to control the Z irrespective of what the uh, G-code is telling the machine to do. And that comes in handy as a, kind of a manual torch eye control. Because <laughs> right now, I don't have ohmic sensing on the tip of the torch just yet. And I don't have a torch eye controller hooked up to plasma sending torch up and torch down signals to Linux CNC. So instead, what I do is I can put a pause in the G code before every cut, use the A button to drop the torch. When it's at the, uh, the sheet metal, I can hit the resume button. It'll lift the torch, pierce, uh, and do the cut. I can watch the arc and then use the two buttons to lift and lower the torch uh, as it goes to make sure it doesn't either get too high or crash the torch into the sheet. And of course, as I'm watching the arc, I am wearing a face mask with, I guess, what, shade five or something? Something so don't burn my retinas out, basically. You know, that, that's important. Uh, don't watch the arc just with your bare eyes or you will regret that very soon. Um, but yeah, this works great just for now. And with the way HAL works, it'll make it very easy to swap that out for a torch light controller once I have one ready because they're just pins in a configuration file. You know, they're um, digital pins very similar to a real pin in reality. Um, just kind of a, an abstraction in, well, HAL. It's the hardware abstraction layer in the CNC. <laughs> I will put out a video in the next probably a week or two explaining all that and walking you through the configurations that I have because I have noticed that there's not very much content on that here on YouTube. There's a lot of documentation, uh, but it's kind of thick and hard to read and the HAL stuff can get very complicated. So I'll, I will make a video for that just in a little while and uh, I will do it specifically for the plasma machine here because this is another use case that's kind of neglected in terms of CNC stuff. You know, like mills are very common, uh, routers are very common, plasmas are less common, and some of the, you know, fine stuff with them, with like torch high control and all, is kind of overlooked pretty often. So anyway, watch out for that. That'll be coming sometime soon. Um, what else? Uh, I do have the torch now operated by the M3 and M5G codes. Uh, you might remember in the last video I shot, I was using the uh, toggle buttons here to run it. And I solved that problem by uh, unscrewing this, removing the wires from the back of the switch, and then plugging them on to a relay on my control, control board here. <laughs> and that works just fine. Um, now that is a temporary thing, you know, and all the wires being exposed still is also a temporary thing. Uh, <laughs> there's at least a splash guard on them, so I hopefully do not fry any electronics while the uh, torch is running on the waterbed. Um, but that goes over to the back of the plasma here, um, but it's plugged into the CPC port, which, what, that stands for Circular Plug Connector Port. Yeah, one of those industrial acronyms, it ends up being uh, redundant three times over. Circular Plug Connector Port, for fuck's sake. <laughs> anyway, I do have a few uh, spare ones that I can wire up later. Um, and that will let me do the pins not only for torch off and on, but also for uh, checking the arc or case signal and the uh, voltage for the torch light control. I just haven't wired that up yet because I'm, I'm not yet sure how I'm going to do that. And those connectors and pins are obscenely expensive for some reason. They're just it's like a dollar a pin. I don't know why, just for cheap little metal like that. But uh, until I know what I'm doing for sure, I'll just run it with this guy, and when I'm ready to hook it up to a THC, then I can move forward doing things, you know, the nicer, neater way. Uh, what else? What else? What else? Um, I have not had any problems yet with the Wi-Fi connection when running the plasma. And that's important because I'm running uh, Linux CNC on the computer down there, but I'm accessing it on my laptop up here. 
Uh, so a VNC server running down there, that's a virtual network connection, I think, stands for VNC. And I'm using a, a client program on this computer to connect to the GUI and let me access you know, all the controls and that kind of stuff. The reason for that being, uh, I didn't want to have another monitor and keyboard you know, hooked up to that computer here. Like, there's enough crap in the shop as it is, obviously. <laughs> I don't need more crap and more wires in the shop. So the Wi-Fi is working, which is great. I also have not had any problems on the uh, wires here for the, the home switches and had any you know, problems with false triggering and that kind of stuff. Or granted, I am running a uh, hypertherm um, plasma torch, which does not use a high frequency start. It uses a, uh, a spring-loaded electrode and that supposedly puts out less interference than uh, models that do have a high frequency start. So your mileage may vary, but for me, it's working and hopefully it stays that way. Uh, what else? I guess I ought to show you uh, some things I've cut lately and talk about uh, the programs I use for making the G-code and the issues and solutions I've had so far. These parts here are just practice cuts. Nothing special, nothing fancy, not for any job or project or anything. I just had some quarter inch plate laying around as scrap, you know, just drop cuts from prior projects, and I decided to pop some holes in them, cut some brackets out, and see overall how well does the machine work. And I'm happy to say, it works pretty fucking well. <laughs> like, it works surprisingly well, given how janky the thing is. Uh, and in fact, for my needs as a home shop welder, this is all the accuracy I could possibly even need. I will continue to improve it over time. Obviously, you know, I'll get a rack and pinion drive and linear bearings and all that jazz, but that's mostly because I'm just OCD, not because it's even necessary. Uh, I, I won't say exactly how accurate the machine is, just because I don't have the tools to tell. Um, like, my good calipers are these, and these are $15 calipers. So I can't use these and say, you know, oh, the machine's good to within five thousandths of an inch or something, because it's... These calipers are shitty enough to not be good to within five thousandths of an inch. So, um, I'll still show you, and overall, like, it's surprisingly good. Leave it at that. Now, the designs here were done in FreeCAD, and the G-code for these ones was made in FreeCAD, and I used Inkscape to make the G-code for these two. Now, I've mentioned both those programs in the past. Uh, in fact, I used them a little bit um, to make the, the sketches and stuff in the earlier testing videos. And sometime in the next, I don't know, two to four weeks, I'll try to put out tutorials on both those and how to make these parts and the G-code for them for a plasma in those programs. Because again, stuff like that for plasma cutters is surprisingly not covered all that well on YouTube yet. Um, especially with FreeCAD, because the path workbench there is rather new. And then with Inkscape, just because... I don't know, people use Inkscape to sketch stuff up and then take it over to SheetCam to do the G-code, whereas you can just do it in Inkscape if you know what you're doing. So <laughs> I spent way too long and way too much effort figuring out how to know what you're doing. <laughs> so I hope to share that with you and save you a bunch of that time and effort. Anyway, as for the parts. This here was the first one I cut, I guess after the, uh, the disc I showed in my prior video. And as you can probably see, it's uh, it's kind of out of square by a pretty good amount. Take this square right here. That's uh, that's nowhere close. But um, I guess I finally figured out how to adjust the gantry to fix that problem. Like I, I corrected that thing four times probably in the the course of drawing out those sketches in the earlier videos to try and get it square, and I just could not manage to get it for the life of me. After cutting this out, I finally realized the trick. But just see how far out of square you are, loosen up the bolts in the gantry, unplug one of the motors, and then jog the other motor like a couple thou, just to bump it off in the right direction. Then tighten up the gantry again, plug in the other motor, and then the result is this. Still a little bit off, a little bit, but way, way closer this time. Um, and you know, at some point in the future, I'll jock it a little bit more again, just to get that last little bit out. But between there and there, that was a massive improvement. And I'm so happy I finally figured out, you know, the right way to do that. Because loosening everything up and then redoing the belt tension and all that over and over again, it just, 
wasted so much time. The trick is, let the motors do it for you. Ah! <laughs> now, this one here, you can see that the holes are also they're pretty oblong, just because the, uh, you know, your XY plane, when your gantry's out of square, is really more of a, a parallelogram than like a Cartesian grid. It's all, everything is skewed, so your circles also end up skewed. Here, they turned out much, much better. Now, the idea was to have them be one inch, um, you know, round and able to fit like a one inch bolt through them, just like that. But they came out a little bit tight here, and this one, I drilled it open just a bit, and then it very easily did fit a piece of a uh, one inch machined rod, which is even harder to do than a one inch bolt because the tolerances on a machined rod are way, way higher. Now I know it's not, uh, it's not ideal to drill open a plasma cut hole just because the, uh, the edge finish here is very hard stuff. The uh, nitrogen in the air combines the steel to form some nitride coating that uh, really is a lot rougher on drill bits. But the drill I used was one of these uh, step drills here from Harbor Freight. It's like a $5 drill bit. And as you can see, the tip of it here is already marked off as trash from, you know, just prior projects of mine. So I don't mind taking this, jamming it in here for a few seconds, just to ram it open and see that sure enough, I can now fit one inch machined rod. All right. Now this fits. I just did this off camera. There we go. See, told you so. And there's some play in there and all, but again, this is a plasma cut hole I reamed open with a Chinese drill bit. <laughs> and it still turned out that well. Now if we go back in the, the, uh, the CAD and just bump it open by like maybe 20 thou, that can plasma cut that hole directly and have it be good enough right off the bat. And if you ever drilled one inch holes in quarter inch plate, oh, you'll appreciate how much better this is. So. That's that. Uh, as for the dimensions on these guys, and we'll show you. Then about as good as my calipers can tell, that's two and a half inches right there, you know? And for the uh, large side, that's about four and a half, you know? Not have the uh, calipers square there. Probably the biggest complaint on how this turned out is the uh, the entry and exit here is a little bit bad. And we'll go over that with the other ones a bit more. As for uh, edge quality, that is fantastic. And as for draws in the back, I got very little at all. Like that, <laughs> a few seconds on a wire wheel and then take off whatever is there. This is without any additional finishing on the back. Now these ones here are the same CAD. I just went back in the sketch and shrunk it down a bit. This changed all the um, constraints to make the whole thing smaller. Because why would you cut out a bunch of these when you can fit like five of these guys in one of this guy? You know, even if it's scrap, waste not, want not, right? Get more tests done. Uh, now these ones you can tell a bit more how the lead in and leads out in free CAD are not quite where you need them to be. You see these holes here are pretty flat on this side. And that's because, well, the Pathwork Bench and FreeCAD is rather new. So they're still working out some bugs and not every feature works as well as it should. So one of those things is doing the lead in for your, your torch. And that was giving me a flat spot right there. And that was really the best I could do. Now these holes, I did uh, oversize just a little bit to make it easier to fit a half inch bolt. Um, and then with that, and again, like a quick touch up from one of those tapered drill bits. It can indeed fit the bolts. A little bit snug there, fetching up with some draws and stuff. There we go. But you can see like, there's a bit of a difference there from each one, but overall like that's, that isn't half bad, you know? And again, probably one of the worst parts is the entry and exit wound right here where the uh, torch came in. So, with that wonkiness in FreeCAD, I decided to give Inkscape a shot for making the, um, the G-code. And that's where we have all these here, and then also this whole plate of uh, botched up cuts. <laughs> we'll get to that one again in a second. So the first one was this, which is the right shape, and you can see the, uh, the arc lead in and lead out gave you a very nice circle. 
but it's also way oversized in the holes and then way undersized in this dimension. Let's see if I can back to inches because we're in America here. There we go. That's coming in at like 9 point, or 0.95. Strangely, that's about one kerf width of the torch off. Hmm. And in this direction, it's the same deal. About one kerf width off. So I realized that Inkscape wasn't, uh, wasn't accommodating the kerf width, even though one of the uh, parameters you enter is the diameter of your kerf, like the, the diameter of the torch tip, like the, the, the cut it leads. It doesn't account for that when you're doing the, the G-code. So... That's what this one here ended up kind of wonky. So I went back, figured out how to accommodate for the curve, and that gave me all these guys, which as you can see, didn't cut all the way. So what was the problem there? Well, I fucked up something else and ended up putting the feed speed way too high. It looked like it was high when I finally went back and checked the G-code and saw that sure enough, there was a, uh, what, G1 F100 I missed. That what did not belong there. Uh, yeah, I was cutting twice as fast as I should have been. <laughs> So, going back, adjusting that one more time, and I got this. Which, sure enough, is right on the money. Like that, that is good. And uh, as for the finished quality in the back, again, very little dross. And uh, with these oversized holes, I was able to fit bolts through it right off the bat. And these are oversized, maybe, I think I made them 0.52 inches rather than 0.5. And the only thing I've got is a little bit of tightness in the back. You can tell the hole is kind of tapered. And I would bet that's because I don't have a torch height control yet. So I'm probably running my plasma a little bit on the high side because I'm controlling that thing manually I really don't want to crash the torch, <laughs> right? So I'd air high as opposed to low, just to make sure I don't do that. Now this one here is threading in, because there's a little bit of dross hanging on the back of that hole there, which is just barely fetching up on the threads. But overall, yeah, that really isn't bad. So uh, stay tuned for later, when I go over, I made these things, and uh, for all the future improvements, coming up. <laughs>